Um, well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. I feel quite humbled because, because I'm not a programmer. And I think a lot of you guys here know a lot more about programming than I do. Um, I'm a journalist. I work for the Tagesanzeiger and the Sonntagszeitung based in Zurich. Um, I covered technology for years, um, about 10 years. But about three years ago, I started doing more and more stuff with data, doing more and more data-driven reporting. Um, and I spent uh, the last summer, about it was a, a four-month course in, at Columbia in New York, um, a computer-assisted reporting course where I learned Python in a three-month, four-month sprint. There was a lot of sweat, a lot of tears. Um, but I have to say I'm really happy I did it because I think it's a great language. And it's, I, a year ago, I could have, no way I could have stood up here and talked to you because I had never actually programmed. Now I spend every day working with Python for, for my work. And this is an example of something I did with some colleagues after getting back from that four-month sprint in New York. What we did is we scraped the database of verdicts from the Bundesverwaltungsgericht, so basically the Supreme Court in Switzerland that deals with everything that regards the, the administration, and we analyzed them. Now, what was, how, what, why did we do this? What was the, how do, why did we set out? Well, this is, this is the cafeteria, and this is where the investigative team of the Tagesanzeiger, which I'm part of, this is where we meet every Monday morning. And back in end of September, a colleague came to the meeting and said, look, this is about the fourth or fifth time I have been approached by a lawyer um, complaining about how different the verdicts are depending on the judge his clients get. The clients are asylum seekers in Switzerland who have been rejected and who then um, appeal this the decision, and this gets moved on to the Bundesverwaltungsgericht, and they have to make the final decision. Are they, are, they going to, are they going to accept this appeal? Can this person stay in the country or not? So we thought, you know, actually, we could, we could, have, we could look at this. We could see if there's a way of looking to see if judges, the various judges, make different decisions on regularly. Um, so first of all, I thought, okay, yes, let's, let's try this. Let's, let's, look at, let's look into this. Where's the data? Now, this is what you'll find. Um, I've put, posted the, the URL down here. Uh, uh, so you, you, this is, I, I might as well just start it up. Uh, this, is what you'll, this is what you find. Uh, if you go into the Bundesverwaltungsgericht, um, you have a selection of all the different departments. There are six different departments, and the ones that we were interested in are the fourth and the fifth. This is where all the verdicts from asylum seekers are collected. That's since 2007. Every single one is published. Every single one by law, they're obliged to publish the verdicts anonymously. You don't see the names of the people. You do have the names of the judges, of course, and you also have the names of the lawyers involved and the nationality. So... This is what, this is what they, uh, you can also see here, the number at the bottom. As I've searched for all of them, you see about just over 30,000 decisions since 2007. Quite a lot. I thought, I didn't realize at the beginning that this is this, is this many decisions these men. That's about that's several thousand a year that these judges have to make. So... This is, this, is what, this is what you get when you uh, look, in, look at each uh, decision. You have a text file. Um, it just carries on down the bottom. Um, but what we were interested in is the, is the date, um, the names of the, of the judges. Um, we also were interested in the nationality of the, of the, of the plaintiffs. Um, and... Um, down here, this is at the bottom, whether, the, whether the, 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 the appeal was rejected or not. Some, some of them are part, partially rejected, partially accepted. Gut geheißen is the, is the German expression. 
So that's the text. So that they're the text files. Maybe just before we go into the code that we developed, I'm sure a lot of you will find the code much too complicated. <laughs> but, and please let me know how I can improve it after this. But before we do that, just a few more words that Bundesverwaltungsgericht, for anybody who doesn't know it, it's actually the biggest court in Switzerland. There were 72 judges. They're based in St. Gallen. They were moved from Bern to St. Gallen uh, 2010, I think it was. They were, they were in Bern before. Um, and the, uh, the, it's actually growing because there are more and more complaints uh, regarding the administration. It's not just asylum seekers, it's tax, all these uh, um, Ausländerrecht, a lot of different things. So this is, this is the court. It was built, it's a nice building. Actually, it doesn't look that nice from the outside, but inside it's quite... It's, Beautiful architecture, actually. Now, who are the judges? Uh, the judges are all on the page, and the judges, of course, they all have um, a political party behind them, most of them. Some of them are, don't have a party, but most of them do because they are actually voted and appointed by Swiss Parliament, so they have a party. This one you can see. This is Frau Nina Spelti Jana Kitsas, and she right at the end is her party, SP Sozial Demokraten. So we have what we have to do. What we did was we scraped the judges. We scraped the 30,000 appeals. And we, had to, we then developed a script to analyze the verdicts, to see which judge made which decision. It's a little bit complicated because there are different, there, 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 was, there are kind of, the, the judges, depending on the decision, how complicated it is, there are different setups. Some of, the, some of the decisions are just made with two judges, some of them with three, some of them with five, the really complicated ones with five. So we had to take that in, into consideration, and what we just basically did is we just counted every single time a judge made a decision, it doesn't matter which uh, setup he was on, a two or three -er or a five -er, that was just when we counted if, it was a, if, it, if the appeal was a accepted or rejected. So, the, I won't go into details of how we, we didn't really have to scrape the judges. They were on the site. There were only 28 uh, current judges. There were 12 more that we needed to consider, the ones that had retired. Um, we didn't have to do that, but we just wanted to play around with Beautiful Soup, um, a, a great uh, library to, to, to pass... Uh, uh, HTML code, which I use a lot now, um, but, but we just, and I put the, the code is on GitHub if anybody's interested, and if anybody can improve it, please let me know. Um, now, to the appeals, that, that, was, the, that was the biggest, uh, the, 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 the initial big part of workload, this took us about three days, um, and we used these, imported the requests, Selenium, the, to, 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 to fake the, the browser, um, and we needed time and, and glob as well. Basically, this is then starting it up, uh, starting up the Firefox browser, visiting the URL, clicking on the, the checkboxes we needed, and then going in to find all the 30,000. This is back in October, it was 29,500, to find all the 29,500 uh, verdicts. And then we just, with a simple for loop, we um, clicked our way through each and every single verdict and saved off the uh, text files onto this machine here. After that, it was, we had all the tw nearly 30,000 verdicts on this machine. Sometimes there, was, there, were, there were a few hiccups. Um, I used that nice little thing in the command line called FD dupes to make sure that I didn't have any duplicates because sometimes it, I had to relaunch the program uh, because I, I'm not quite sure why, and maybe one of you guys can tell me what, what happened. Uh, but, but I had to relaunch the program to make sure I didn't have any duplicates. I used, I used F dupes, um, deleting the, the ones that were duplicate. So now, now we start, now we 
wanted, we, we had all these 30,000 verdicts in a folder. I want to iterate through each one, um, pulling out the names of the judges and the, the, the dates and so on, and the, and the actual verdicts. So we, we, regular expressions, of course, we did it. And to, to, to visualize that or to put it into some, something that actually people can read, we used uh, pandas. So we pulled out all the names again of um, the list of 30,000 and then developed our little functions using the variable expressions. The top one would be for the, for the uh, we took the arc to number as well, just to, just to make sure if we found something, we could find it back to, to refer back to the database to see if, it, if everything's correct. Um, of course, it's not just, it wasn't just German, but it was French as well we had to consider and Italian. So we had to develop these things three times. This is, uh, uh, these are the regular expressions we developed in our, with, within, our, within our functions. Um, then we decided whether it was gut geheißen or abgewiesen. Also, with a function, we packed that all, and, these, and the judge names, of course, because we had the list of judges, and we went to look, at, look for them in the documents. And... This was then the first result. This, was a, this is just a simple visualization of the, the counting the amount of uh, verdicts that were made. It drops back there because there's a time lag for when, when, the, when the court actually publishes their verdict. So it drops, and that's the end of the year. So that the, the, the last section there you can forget. So you can see a, um, they, had a, they had a peak, the buildup, but it's more or less st stable now of the amount of uh, appeals that they deal with. Um, and then, with a bit of pandas data wrangling, this, this code is all published on GitHub as well. Um, we counted, uh, depending on the, um, the judge and his party, um, how many of these appeals were accepted and how many were rejected. Um, so you see, these are the ones, the most, the, the ones that the most, the softest judges. You can see. Uh, green, Partei Laws, FTP, SP, Partei Laws. So you can see you know, they're up at 28% of the ones that they actually accepted. You go down to the other side, you have 6.9%. So it's an obvious, obvious um, pattern here. The <laughs> <laughs> so the more right-wing the judges are, they have a three-fold chance, four-fold chance of actually being accepted, which we found is quite incredible. This is supposed to be, you know, if you're, a, if you're a, a plaintiff with an appeal and you know you've got this judge on the panel, your chances are four times worse or better. It doesn't seem that quite, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. So that was the beginning. This was just the beginning then of to, 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 do, to do some, to, to, to develop a story on why this is and how this has happened. Um, three percent, we have, we have three percent we couldn't categorize. If I had been a scientist, I would have then sat down and counted them, but I'm not a scientist, I'm a, I'm a lazy journalist, so I didn't do that. So the three percent we couldn't take and we didn't consider. Things need to move fast as well. And this is what we, this is what we ended up with. We, had, we could really show, this is the next page maybe, as well, we listed uh, the the judges, the softest judges, the, far, the, the hardest, the, the, the toughest judges. Um, and we also had, because the story had started off with all the lawyers complaining about these decisions, we had lots of people that could give us their story. And this is what we ended up with um, uh, of how this, is in particularly the, not the top one actually, Hafeli, the one with uh, the around about 10% quota. He was, he'd been doing this for years, and he is, he's actually proud of the fact that he gets cases done quicker, and that's why he says he has a, a worse rate than others who are wasting taxpayers' uh, money. Um, the, judge, the, the court, they didn't accept our analysis. First of, all, first of all, they said it was not possible, and then they said it was wrong. <laughs> And, uh, and when I went to speak, it took, us, took me about another two months to actually get a, 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 an interview with, with Mr. Bachler. Um, and he then said, actually, you know, it's not wrong. I just wanted to tell people it was wrong, which I found quite incredible for a, for, for, for a, 
for the for the law for the judge of the biggest court in Switzerland. Um, so we ran a little piece then saying that you know he actually admitted that it's that it's that it's correct. We also could because we had all this we had we had we had this data we could also look at the other side look at the most successful lawyers. Um, this is the most successful lawyer in the Azul im Azul Recht. Um, and he could actually then explain why these differences are. The reason is, is because you have this addition in Swiss law that you have to... You, it's, a, it's not just about if somebody can prove something, but it's, some, it's about if, peop, if what they are saying is believable or not. And depending on that, that's a, that's a paragraph that they can, that's very flexible. And that gives them enough... That gives the judges enough space to kind of really consider... What, they're, what the, the appeals, what they'll be, what they'll be uh, doing or not. And that kind of, that, uh, this, our analysis allowed us to highlight this guy's take on the whole system and why, it's, why it doesn't really work for him. Yes, thank you. Um, that was a kind of a condensed. Uh, this took us about, it was, a, it was about three, three weeks, the whole thing, uh, which is, you know, if, uh, in journalistic, in, a, in the pace of, of the journalistic world was, is, is, is quite slow, really, but I'm sure for, for, for in the world of science, it's really, really fast. But it worked, and it's reproducible, and we can share the code, and we can hopefully have people use it and adapt it. So, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That was very impressive. I guess we have a lot of questions. Right over there. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks very much for the talk. And, and I mean, great work. And, and I think in, in current, current world, we need more of this. So my question is, what were the pain point and what can this community improve to make your work easier? Um, look at the code and 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 and, and point out uh, how the co how the code can work faster. Why, for instance, the database kept crashing that of, of their database. Point. Try to tech people. You tell you know how. Basically, basically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in digging deeper and learning more code, learning how to improve my code. So basically, I'm, I'm, I, I would be really, really grateful if you, just, if you just look at the code, go through it and say, look, that there, what you've done there is, is, uh, is, is much too complicated. Um, and um, there, there were, there were, there's actually a risk of a, of a mistake there. So kind of bas basically just... Uh, Revise it. Look, 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 and 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 and, uh, and and help me help us. There were there were journal, more journalists doing this as well. Help journalists uh, apply more sophisticated code. Yeah. Was this a one-time story, or will you continue to observe the results? Um, we, we, we are, we, we are. This story here wasn't just this thing I've put on the side here. It wasn't just about saying, look, that this judge actually admitted that we were right. It's also comparing how, comparing the, the, the development of the verdicts uh, in the last, since, since October. Because um, we can just do that now. It's just a, we just scrape them and press a button and that's it. Um, uh, and... Uh, and, it, and it's uh, actually they've, they've, they got stricter since then. So, yeah. so yes, we're going to keep that up to, to keep on comparing. We, and it actually started something now using snippets of the code here, looking at uh, the Bundesgericht, which is then every, all the 70,000 verdicts in the Bundesgericht since 2007. That's not related to asylum seekers, but uh, to everybody else living in, in Switzerland. <laughs> Uh, I have two questions. Question number one, um, did you ask the 
the Bundesverwaltungsgericht to, to give you their, their database because it would have been much easier to mm -hmm. reverse engineer. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yes, we did ask first and they said, of course, we can't, we can't give it to you. We, we, can't, we don't have that capability for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I know the reasons. <laughs> and question number two, uh, just yesterday the Bundesrat announced that uh, they will no, no longer provide access to the documents um, with um, Beschaffungs, mm -hmm. Beschaffungsrecht. Yeah. So they really uh, step back from making mm -hmm. internal documents um, public, mm -hmm. also with the Öffentlichkeitsgesetz. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the Bundesverwaltungsgericht, they, maybe they will move towards the same uh, solution just just to hide the details, or what do you think mm -hmm. about it? Um, well, for for the for the for the for courts to do that, the law will have to be changed. On the highest level, they're they're obliged now to publish every single verdict. And the decision that on the on the uh, uh, Beschaffungswesen, I, I, it's not really sure. They're not really sure if they can actually do this. And I just had an email from a from a colleague who's in the Parliamentarische Gruppe Digitale Nachhaltigkeit, and there's an uproar there right now from, from and a lot of politicians, a lot of Nationalräte in that group. And I think it's going to be, there's going to be a battle now if they, if they will be able to do that. Um, um, it's not completely, there's not really clearly clear if they are allowed to or not. There's going to be a legal battle there. Regarding the courts, I don't think it's, it can't. That, 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 they would have to change the, the, the Bundesverfassung. We still have some time left for more questions over there. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, I, I was never aware of that kind of new direction of journalism. I find it really interesting. Do you think you are a pioneer or... Like, do you see more data analysis coming into journalism now, or? Definitely, it's really an, an area that uh, is growing now. There are journalists that are starting to, to to realize how powerful the combination of programming skills and storytelling skills are. If you if you have them both, you can you can do quite incredible things. Um, but it, it is very new. Um, there has been, it's been a lot of, I mean, there's, there's also a lot of hype about it. And in the recent years, there's been a lot of stuff, efforts put into visualizations and things, which I think is great and fascinating. But I think now things are starting getting really interesting um, when it's not, not just about visualize, visualizing, but uh, data analysis and using this as, as a starting point for research. Um, but yes, this course that, that I mentioned at the beginning in, in, uh, in New York, it's only, this is the third year that it's been going, and it's the first of a kind. Um, but you'll, I think you're going to see a lot of similar ones popping up um, in, in all over Europe and in, in the US, similar, similar offerings. Thank you. Okay. So that's also something that you could get into, you know, kind of educating journalists in, uh, code to code, basically. I think we had one more question there. Uh, yeah, it was basically the same thing at the state of the data driven journalism. Um, but also, um, how do you handle, for example, it, this was public information, but mm -hmm. you can also have uh, uh, hacking of, of data, and, and you get you get data, and the, I don't know that some hacker uh, up, up give it to you, mm -hmm. um, WikiLeaks or whatever. So I'm just wondering how did you face that as a, as an argument or probably future projects? How, how do you help handle that? More like an ethical. You have to be very comprehensive of just. That, but that's something that, that journalism, journalism is all about. Yes, I mean, very recently we were, we were given a huge email uh, collection from this uh, ex-financial um, guy of this uh, Norwegian church, a Norwegian sect, with, with, a Swiss, with a Swiss community as well. And they gave us 250,000 of it. Uh, or we were, 
got 250,000 of this guy's emails. So we could really kind of go dig deep into this and so to see, and the story was basically, is this sect, uh, because in Switzerland, um, there is no, uh, religious foundations aren't obliged to pay tax, and they don't even have to have a thing in the Handelsregister as well, a, a, a sec section in the Handelsregister. So there's a, it's a, it's a da there's a big danger there for, for, for tax fraud. And the, basically the story was we, we, did, we did research using these 250,000 emails whether this Swiss section of the church were committing tax evasion or not. But we couldn't just go on and publish all these private emails from these guys, of course. But that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a an ethical journalistic decision. You have, to, you have to choose the ones that are actually really relevant, um, and the rest of them you just have to leave apart. But the whole research, of course, I used... There was some library to, uh, to, to look at this to, to, that I used to, to visualize. Um, I think it was... was it? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, to visualize the, the emails, to, to pinpoint the ones that, that, that seem, the people that seem to be relevant, and to then dig into those, to those emails. But yes, we, we actually ended up not actually publishing anything from the emails, but just the story of whether, and they, were, they are committing tax evasion. Yes, we could take one more question, if there are any. Recently, the um, judges um, um, are like more stringent, if I understand you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that this might be um, because of your you monitoring the verdicts? And uh, if you think so, would you uh, keep the report as you did it or somehow change it? I, I, it did have an effect. There was a lot of, it did create a stir. The guy that we highlighted there is actually no longer, <laughs> he's no longer on that department. He's been moved to a different department now. So, so it had an effect. But I don't think that them being stricter, that would, I don't think that was a result of, of our research. I think it's just a, a result of the current political atmosphere uh, and how Switzerland or how we as a community, how Europe as a community views asylum seekers. I think it's a result of that. But that's just a hypothesis. I can't prove it. Maybe the last one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so do you think that the Tages Anzeiger team on data journalism is, um, is it the largest of the traditional newspapers in Switzerland? Do you think it's an area where you are ahead of your, like, uh, of the other newspapers like the NZZ? Um, I think we're ahead of the NZZ. <laughs> I like to. <laughs> Now, I think what, what, what's, happened, what's happening there is it's, 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 a, it's a driven by the, uh, the, the, the publisher, the Felega of uh, Pietro Subino, who's kind of pushing, and every year they want three or four participants, or uh, three or four employees to visit this, this, uh, uh, this school in, in New York. And it's happening this year again. Um, and uh, it hasn't led to a sort of clear-cut data-driven team. I'm on the investigative team. I collabor collaborate with people. I think the SRF, they have a, a dedicated uh, data team. The NCZ used to, they don't have any more. Um, the Luton has something. Um, I think Blick has actually started developing some uh, project. It's happening everywhere. I think we are, thanks to this initiative from the Felega, we are on the forefront in Switzerland at least, yeah. All right, let's thank the speaker again.